In this video, you'll learn a few tricks on how to free space on your iPhone. Ever get that dreaded message, iPhone storage full, or cannot take photo as there is not enough storage space? Well, it's time to do something about it. So let's do that with the quickest and easiest ways. First of all, go to settings, general, iPhone storage to get a snapshot of your storage usage. Most of the time I see that the photos and apps component makes up the majority of storage issues. Looking at this page, we see recommendations. The most convenient option is to upload all your photos and videos to iCloud. This will fix your storage issues the very best and easiest way. However, it comes at a cost of $3 US per month for 200 gigabytes or $4.50 Australian, which is what you'd probably need now and eventually $10 per month for two terabytes or 15 Australian dollars, which is what you'll probably need in the future. So this price can add up. So let's keep moving on with free options. There's an option here to enable the offloading of unused apps when you get low on storage space. This one here is a no brainer because your iPhone knows which apps you don't use. So when it comes time to requiring more space, this will happen automatically and seamlessly. And if you need to get those apps back later, your iPhone will remember any settings you have associated with those apps when you re-download them again in the future. Looking further down, you can see that there are several apps chewing up a lot of space here. Again, photos, but then I have Spotify at 11 gig. This represents downloaded music that I can access while offline, for example, when on a plane flight. So I could delete this, but I think this is a good use of storage, so I prefer to leave it. Next, you can see WhatsApp and Messages take up a fair proportion too, along with ProTake, which is a great app for shooting video. I've got another video here on how to clear space on WhatsApp, but for today, let's just keep to the clearing of space using the features inside this iPhone storage menu options. So come back up to the top to the recommendation sections and tap show all. Below the iCloud photos and offload unused apps recommendation, you can see one called review personal videos. When you tap this, this shows you your largest video files that you've taken, over 400 megabytes that is. And now this is the best bang for buck and quickest way to free up storage quickly. So browse through the biggest files here and take a look at them. You might decide straight away that you don't need these videos on your phone still, so you can compromise and quickly free up say five to 10 gigs in a matter of seconds. After doing so, you won't need to go into your phone app and delete the recently deleted items either as it gets zapped cleanly here. Next, come down to review large attachments. These are probably videos that you've sent or received over iMessage. You can probably go through and delete all these because videos that you've sent, they probably still live on your iPhone in your camera roll, but take care if you wanna keep the ones that were sent to you. After that, I recommend you browse through the list of apps displayed here in order of largest apps first. You'll know yourself as there is an app here that you don't really need. Again, you can probably free up two to five gigabytes pretty quickly here. Then down the bottom, you can see iOS and system data takes up 15 or 20 gigabytes. Not that you'd want to, but you can't delete these things for obvious reasons. If after all of this, you're still struggling to create more storage space, then you're probably too attached to all the photos and videos on your camera roll. So the best workflow I can recommend for you to get the best of both worlds, which ensures you can keep all your photos on your phone, plus have plenty of space free, is to use the power of Google One and Google Photos which is free to a point, as well as backing up your photos to a hard drive for safekeeping. And just a quick note, this video, no, it's not sponsored by Google. So go ahead and download Google Photos and sign into a Google account if you don't already have one. You might even like to set up a new Google account just for your photos and videos. Tap in the top right and click Google Photos settings. I recommend you set use mobile data to back up photos, but leave this off for videos because it will chew up your mobile data pretty quick. So it will wait until you're connected to Wi-Fi to sync videos. I also recommend to select upload size and choose storage saver to save files that are slightly reduced quality, but don't worry, it's still great quality. This will take quite a time to back up, but once done, you have access to all your photos and videos. Now let's go ahead and back up your photos to a hard drive. The easiest way to do this is to connect your phone to your Mac and open image capture. Copy the photos from previous years to an external hard drive. For example, I just offloaded from 2018 to the end of 2020. So create a folder on your hard drive with a similar label. Then once imported, you can then delete these photos from your camera roll inside the image capture app itself. You then have a hard copy of all your photos on your hard drive, plus you have them on Google Photos on demand 
and you have extra storage space free to take more photos and videos. Google One gives you 15 gig of free storage and because it saves photos and videos at a lower file size if you choose, this 15 gig can provide enough space for several years of content. Once you do exhaust that storage though, the next plan is 100 gig for 20 US dollars or 25 Australian dollars and I'm sure that will be more than enough storage for a very long time. And I think this is more than reasonable for peace of mind of having access to all your photos from any device at any time. Watch this video next to learn how to enable Face ID with the mask on using the latest iOS. It even works with the motorbike helmet on. I'll see you there.